Anatomy and Physiology of Anal Canal and Rectum The development of rectum and anal canal is associated with the growth of the tail fold. Rectum is derived from the primitive rectum, i.e. the dorsal subdivision of cloacae. The anal canal is formed partly from the endoderm of primitive rectum and partly from the ectoderm of anal pit or proctoderm. Anal canal. The anal canal is situated below the pelvic diaphragm between the ischio-rectal fossa. It is the terminal part of large intestine. It is 3, 8 to 4.0 cm long and it extends from the anorectal junction to the anus. The long axis of the anal canal points towards the umbilicus. Anal canal lies in the perineum anal triangle in between the right and left ischio-rectal fossa. The surgical anal canal extends from the anal verge to the anorectal ring. Anal canal passes downwards and backwards from the perineal flexure. It has greatest surgical importance both, because of its role in the mechanism of rectal continence and because it is prone to certain diseases. In normal living subject, the anal canal is completely collapsed owing to the tonic contraction of the anal sphincter, and the anal orifice is represented by an antero-posterior slit in the anal skin. Relations of the anal canal. Anteriorly. 1. Perineal body in both sexes. 2. Membranous urethra and the bulb of penis in males. 3. Lower end of vagina in females. Posteriorly. Oniococcygeal ligament and tip of coccyx, in both sexes. Laterally. Ischio-rectal fossa and interior of the anal canal in both sexes. Interior of the anal canal. Upper part. It extends from anorectal ring to the pectinate line and about 15 mm long. It is the mucous part and is lined by columnar epithelium. The mucous membrane shows anal columns of morgagni, anal valves, anal sinuses, anal papillae and pectinate line. Anal glands are 4 to 8 in number and each has a direct opening into apex of anal crypt and occasionally, two glands open into same crypt. Middle part. It lies between the pectinate line above and white line of Hilton below and is about 15 mm long. This part of the anal canal is lined by a stratified squamous epithelium which is thin and glossy and is devoid of sweat glands. The Hilton's line is situated at the level of interval below the subcutaneous part of the anal sphincter and the lower border of internal anal sphincter. On digital examination in living subject, an anal intersphinct eric groove can be felt at this site. Lower part. It is about 8 mm long, and is lined by true skin containing the sweat and sebaceous glands cutaneous part. Golier described the lining of the anal canal as mucus in the upper part and cutaneous in the lower part. Junction of these two parts is marked by dentate line or pectinate line, situated 2 cm from anal orifice. It also marks the junction of posterior allantoic and endoderm. One can recognize the dentate line, which is important, both morphologically and surgically. It divides anal canal as follows. Above cubical epithelium, autonomic nervous and portal venous system. Below, squamous epithelium, spinal nerves and systemic venous system. Above this line, mucous membrane is thrown into 8 to 12 vertical folds known as morgagni. Each column is connected by anal wall below the pectinate line. Each column contains terminal radical of superior rectal artery and vein. These radicals being largest at left lateral 3 o'clock, right anterior 7 o'clock and right posterior 11 o'clock quadrants of wall of anal canal. Enlargement of venous radicals at these three sites constitutes primary hemorrhoids. Onyo rectal ring. 148. This term was coined by Milligan and Morgan to denote the functionally important ring of the muscle, which surrounds the junction of the rectum and anal canal. This is composed of the upper borders of the internal and external sphincters, which completely encircles the junction and on the posterior and lateral aspects, by the strong pubo-rectalis sling. As a consequence, the ring is stronger posteriorly and laterally, than it is anteriorly and its definition on the posterior aspect is accentuated by the forward angulation of the bowel at this level. Recognition of the anorectal ring is of great importance in the treatment of abscess and fistula in the anal region, for its complete division inevitably results in rectal incontinence, while its preservation, despite the sacrifice of all the rest of sphincter musculature at least ensures that there will be no gross lack of control, though minor degree of incontinence may result. Musculature of the anal canal, 149. Anal sphincters. Internal anal sphincter. It is formed by thickened, circular muscle fibers and is involuntary. It is 2.5 cm long and 2.5 mm thick. It surrounds the upper three quarters of the anal canal, 
i.e. from the upper part of the anal canal to the white line of Hilton. In the formation of fissure and other anal conditions, the spasm and contraction of this muscle plays an important role. External anal sphincter. It surrounds the whole length of anal canal and is voluntary. It is made up of stratified muscles. The external anal sphincter, formerly subdivided into three the deep, superficial and subcutaneous portion. The deep part is a thick annular band surrounding the upper part of internal sphincter and its deep fibers fused with puberectalis muscle. It arises from the onyococcygeal ligament and inserted into perineal body. The superficial part is connected anteriorly to the perineal body and posteriorly to the terminal ligament of coccyx through onyococcygeal ligament. It surrounds the lower part of internal sphincter. The subcutaneous part lies below the level of the internal sphincter and has no bony attachments. Conjoint longitudinal coat. It lies between the external and internal sphincters, and formed by the fusion of puberectalis with longitudinal muscle coat of rectum at the anorectal junction. It becomes fibroelastic downwards and at the white line it is spread out fan-like called corrugator cutis ani and are attached to the true anal and perianal skin. It provides pathway for the spread of perianal infections and mark out tight compartments that are responsible for the intense pressure and pain that accompany many perianal lesions. Surgical spaces related to anal canal. The ischio-rectal space, on each side of the anal canal. The perianal space, surrounds the anal canal below the white line. The submucous space, lies above the white line between the mucous membrane and the internal sphincter. Blood supply of anal canal. 150. Arterial supply of anal canal. Above the pectinate line is supplied by the superior rectal artery and below the pectinate line is by the inferior rectal artery. Venous drainage. 1. Internal rectal venous plexus hemorrhoidal plexus lies in the submucosa of anal canal, drains mainly into the superior rectal vein, but communicates freely with the external plexus and thus with middle and inferior rectal veins. Internal plexus is therefore an important site of communication between portal and systemic veins. Internal plexus is a series of dilated pouches connected by transverse branches around the anal canal. Veins in the three anal columns, 3, 7 and 11 o'clock positions is seen in lithotomy position are large and constitute the potential sites for primary internal piles. 2. External rectal venous plexus, this lies outside the muscular coat of the rectum and anal canal. Lower part of external plexus is drained by inferior rectal vein into pudental vein. The middle part by the middle rectal vein into the internal iliac vein. The upper part by the superior rectal vein, which continues as the inferior mesenteric vein. 3. Anal veins. They are arranged radially around the anal margin, which communicates with the internal rectal plexus. Excessive straining during defecation, may rupture one of these veins resulting perianal hematoma or thrombosed external hemorrhoid. Lymphatic drainage. Above the pectinate line drains into internal iliac nodes. Below the pectinate line drains into medial group of superior inguinal nodes. Nerve supply. 151. Above pectinate line, autonomic nerves, both sympathetic, inferior hypogastric plexus, L1, L2, and parasympathetic, pelvic splanchnic, S2, S3, S4. Below pectinate line, inferior rectal, S1, S2, S3 somatic. Internal sphincters are contracted by sympathetic and relaxed by parasympathetic. External sphincters are supplied by inferior rectal and perineal branch of fourth sacral nerve. Both sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves carry pain sensations. Rectum. 152. The rectum constitutes the terminal segment of colon. It extends from the rectosigmoid junction to the dentate line below. It is 12 cm. In length. The rectosigmoid junction lies opposite to the sacral promontory. The rectum begins as a continuation of sigmoid colon at the level of S3 vertebra. The rectum ends by becoming continuous with the anal canal at the anal rectal junction. The junction lies 2 to 3 cm in front of and little below the tip of the coccyx. The rectum is about 12 cm long and in the upper part it is 4 cm in diameter, but in the lower part it is dilated to form rectal ampulla. Course of rectum. It runs first downwards and backwards and finally downwards and forwards called sacral flexure and perineal flexure. During this course, it shows three lateral curves also. Upper lateral convex to the right. Middle lateral convex to the left. Lower lateral convex to the right. Relations of rectum. 1. 
peritoneal. The upper one-third road is covered with peritoneum in front and on sides. The middle one-third road is covered only in front and the lower one-third road is devoid of peritoneum. 2. Visceral. Anteriorly in males, the upper two-thirds road of the rectum is related to the rectovesical pouch. Lower one-third road is related to the base of the urinary bladder, the terminal part of ureters, the seminal vesicles, the efferent ducts and the prostate. Anteriorly in females, the upper two-thirds road of the rectum is related to the recto-uterine pouch, the lower one-third road to the lower part of vagina. Posterior relations. Lower three pieces of the sacrum, the coccyx, the onyococcygeal ligaments, piriformis, coccyges, the levatorani, the median sacral, the superior rectal and lower lateral sacral vessels, the sympathetic chain. Mucosal folds of rectum. The mucous membrane of empty rectum shows two types of folds, longitudinal folds and transverse or horizontal folds. Longitudinal folds. They are transitory and present in the lower part of the rectum and are obliterated by distension. Transverse or horizontal folds, Houston's valves or plicate transversalis. They are permanent and most marked when the rectum is distended. They are three in numbers the upper, middle, and lower folds. The upper fold lies near the upper end of rectum, sometimes it may encircle and partially constrict the lumen. The middle fold lies at the upper end of rectal ampulla and projects from the anterior and right walls. The lower fold lies 2.5 cm below the middle fold and projects from the left wall. Arterial supply of rectum. Superior rectal artery. The branches of superior rectal artery pierce the muscle coat and run in the anal columns up to the anal valves where they form looped anastomosis. Middle rectal artery it supply the muscle coat of lower part of rectum. Median sacral artery. Supplies to the posterior wall of onyal rectal junction. Venous drainage. Superior rectal vein. It drains into inferior mesenteric vein. Middle rectal vein opens into internal iliac veins lymphatic drainage upper half of rectum is drained through inferior mesentric nodes lower half through the internal iliac nodes nerve supply rectum is supplied by both sympathetic l1 l2 and parasympathetic s2 s3 and s4 nerves through the superior rectal and inferior hypogastric plexus sympathetic nerves are vasoconstrictor inhibitory to the rectal musculature and motor to the internal sphincter parasympathetic or motor to the musculature of the rectum and inhibitory to the internal sphincter. Sensations of distension of rectum passes through parasympathetic nerves while pain sensations are carried by both sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves. Functions. Functionally, the rectum is divided into two parts, above and below the middle transverse fold. The upper part develops from the hindgut and lies above the middle fold of rectum acts as a fecal reservoir. The lower part develops from the cloacae and lies below the middle fold is normally empty except during defecation, after death and in chronic constipation. Being sensitive, its distension causes the desire to defecate. Anus. It is the surface opening of the anal canal situated 4 cm, below and in front of the tip of coccyx in the cleft between the two buttocks. The surrounding skin is pigmented and thrown into radiating folds, which contains a ring of large apocrine glands. The sphincters keep the lumen closed in the form of an antero-posterior. Longitudinal slit. It expands only during expulsion of feces.